any thought in the back there, CP that comes up and says uh, development in this area, but you've got a residential zoning, and some courts would say you can't do the residential zoning. So are you aware of any instances where there's a inconsistency between the zone that has its own today and the SCP designations that you're coming up with? Not aware of any particular ones, but those conditions do occur, and it's either a non-conforming situation. Uh, and uh, I think if you're referring to residential dwellings within the SME, most of those are exempt if they're just you know, for a dwelling within a single-family dwelling, and you may be subject to uh, environmental disclosure requirements. But typically, those uh, developments, a single dwelling on a single lot, they're not something that would be uh, from the home. Okay, yeah, because we, we don't have like, a comparison of existing zoning with uh, SCP designations, and, and I, I would be concerned about the fact that they would have uh, somebody with existing zoning without the plan and all of a sudden they're coming for their permit to build maybe their, their house or, or their subdivision or maybe a small commercial store and they couldn't do that because now with the sustainable community plan says this is supposed to be eggs. Yeah. Yes, I understand. So your understanding is that the SCP would not prevent that? Would it prevent uh, development on the existing zone? No. As long as they comply with the non compliant laws. Given the introduction agreement of the Oregon Road Foundry, which is new to the plan, it wasn't in the prior, are there any nuances that's affected by that if there's development that's desired outside of the Oregon Road Foundry? Does, does it preclude it or just is it a different process to your inconsistency? Well, the intent of this plan is a 25 year plan. So mm -hmm. the boundary. The urban road boundary, the urban community boundaries, intended to constrain development, urbanization within those boundaries to preserve agriculture in open states. So, if a developer were to ask for an uh, urban type development outside the boundary, uh, we would be probably in opposition to it. Now, there are, um, I guess, uh, routes that that person could do to ask for the change, one of it which we has the department to initiate the amendment to the boundary through an um, independent consideration, which we probably not support, or ask city council to initiate a resolution asking the department to initiate an amendment. Those are the two ways I know about you can you know, go through that route. Yeah. The other way too is rather than starting with the city, is to start with the state. Chances are those lands that are outside the urban growth boundary are in the agriculture or conservation boundary or conservation districts. So they could very well start there. Of course, in that process, um, the city is a party and the Lands Commission is charged with comparing that project to the boundary policy of the city. So it will not be an easy thing to do. Is there a state land map in the back? I don't think so. Uh, no, it's essentially when the um, original development plans were established, the first area that we would take out from being uh, a potential um, developable area is, is lands and conservation. Because those are um, forest reserves intended to be open space, protects the natural resources. So automatically that's not in my jurisdiction. Although we included within the planning you know, reference. So in case we have projects that go before the land board, we, we can always refer to our plan and they come in to ask us for comments. Um, now on the flip side of that, we have the urban district. And automatically that's given to the county because under the state land use law, the county's sole zoning responsibility for land in the urban district. So most of those would be things like residential zoning, business zoning, industrial, that sort of stuff. So that's where a lot of the boundaries uh, uh, plans is strictly, you know, where the county has the jurisdiction where to apply those. 
And then lands in the state of agriculture will share those responsibilities. And, and the plan also covers that through its open space, agriculture, country <coughs> type of uh, land use policies. Okay. On the, you, you, you had previously an existing S, I guess it's still in the SCP, you had three types of rural boundary. One was a rural community boundary, second was the agricultural boundary, third was a preservation boundary. So now you're combining all those things into a community growth boundary. Well, it's not as simple as combining it into one boundary. Essentially, the ag boundary and the preservation boundary is still there. It's just, it's just not being referred to as a boundary. It's, it's areas that are slated for agricultural and preservation policies. And Outside where does that of, show up on the plan? Uh, you would have to look at the uh, maps in the back. And you can see, you can see the green, for example, the um, the land use map, which is the first, yes, the second map actually. You can see that there is different colors representing agriculture, preservation, parks, golf courses. Yeah, so although there is no boundary, it still refers to these polygons of various uh, uses to remain or be consistent with the policy for those areas. So the, now what you call a community growth boundary with a lot of times is more the developable area. Yes, yes. The more urbanized areas okay. and intended to provide some um, surplus lands for future development. Oh. Are you removing the boundary designation so is that sufficiently clear for state land use to determine what your intent or what the department's intent is? Well, let me put it this way. Projects that come before the Land Use Commission will also come before us for either comment or end up as a, a boundary, I mean, a, a SCP amendment, a DP amendment that would go before you folks. And we would be analyzing those things to see whether or not it is consistent. So they would be asked, or they, the Land Use Commission wouldn't be the one analyzing all our implementation, we would be the ones giving the comments to the LUC. Any other questions? So when you say that they have uh, sufficient matter for future expansion, within the yellow that you're showing on the land use map, some of those lands are state land use agriculture? Uh, no. Everything you see on this map here is all within the urban district. So the town has sold and within those maps, you'll find that there are some vacant lots. For example, mainly in the area of the uh, upper continental Pacific, you find a lot of vacant lands there. Okay, so you, I guess, based on that, then, then if you wanted to reclassify state land use agricultural lands, you'd have to first come for the community uh, the SCP plan amendment. It's not mandatory, but. It, we would like that to occur first because our plan is a community-based plan. So, was the LUC's plan, you know, it was established back in the 60s. So, I, I would think you'd want to get the community support first before going to the LUC. We did receive testimony and comments to the rural nature and character of any development existing in our future. Um, and there's reference to rural development standards. We've seen that before. Do you have an update on the rural development standard? Uh, essentially, what we're proposing in the plan to address rural development standards is, is our current position. Uh, we have not received any uh, policy changes or or anything different from our um, administration on this. Any last questions for the department? Hearing none, thank you very much.
like to open up to just a member discussion. We can open comments or questions that members have for each other. Yeah, I do apologize because all my information that I received is through the meeting. So I didn't have the privilege of being able to hear the community. But if I'm not correcting an additional 800 meals in the area, proposed area. Um, yeah, so my understanding, and if this be validated, is um, the department referenced just a one large project of 300 acres, mm -hmm. and it would have an increase of 875 units. And that would be in addition to the potential that's on the books. Yeah. But I think it's really important that we get a handle on that information, mm -hmm. only because I'm concerned, and I think our being, excuse me, Mr. Young, but I think that's in a previous meeting about infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And that's a real concern for me. And I'm sure it's a concern for me. But I still don't have a handle on it. I don't think it's significant as it is. Thank you, and I think that's in line with some prior GP questions that we've had to abolish. Thank you. 